I love getting ban lists because it allows me to make these kind of videos again. And honestly, I'd be lying if I told you they weren't fun to make. Always gotta think about the best decks to play and make sure I don't mention them and only show the garbage decks. Nah, I'm just kidding, I'm not that evil. But yeah, more often than not, I do end up making a couple of mistakes every single list, but I think this one is as close as it gets to perfection. I did have a lot of time to theory craft for this format pre-Age of Overlord, and I do believe I managed to find the best decks to play at the current moment. But before I leak the goo, you already know the drill. Smash the like and subscribe button for me real quick if you know what I'm saying. God bless you, my child. You are the best, and now let's proceed. Alright, so in the number 10 position, I will put Cyber's decks in general, but especially Marincess. So the deck doesn't really lose to cards that are super popular. It plays with one card, can play a lot of hand shops, can play a lot of really fun floodgates like Gozen Match and Stealth Kragen. And it can also make Toad, which is an Omni Negate, as well as Abyss Dweller, which is insta win against Unchained and Tier Elements. So going first, it has a couple of negations and blowouts, and going second, it has a lot of hand shops. And again, the deck only plays with like one or two cards, it's really consistent, so, you know, I only have positive things to say about it. Now, Math Mech is also a very respectable deck, but unfortunately, unlike Marincess, it does lose really hard to Bestials and DD Crow. Therefore, even though I will say that it's a good option, I would still stay away from it. Salamangrate is also another good Cybers deck that can also turbo out Dweller, but unfortunately, Nibiru is game. Anyways, number 9 spot goes to Labyrinth. Honestly, I don't even think the deck is worth playing at the moment, and I do believe the Unchained matchup is catastrophic. Nevertheless, it can still floodgate its opponents to death or virus them to death. It can also loop the barrier back to back, which is uh, kind of disgusting. But the deck will improve drastically once we get, uh, you know, Arius from Age of Overlord, as well as Transaction Rollback from Maze of Millennia. So it's a good long-term investment, and you shouldn't really sell it right now. Anyways, next up is Mana Dome, and this deck definitely got much better now that people are dropping Drool and Nibiru from their deck because of the popularity of Unchained. Well, I mean, Nibiru is still seeing play, but maybe not in the main deck. Mana Dome has a very high ceiling, but it's also very complicated and very tricky to play, so it's not for everyone. And also, just like Labyrinth, it is also getting a level 6 Synchro Monster in Age of Overlord, which is going to make the deck infinitely better. So keep an eye out on Mana Dome. And yes, I said Mana Dome, not Manadium, fight me. Anyways, we've got Rika now. I don't know shit about the deck because it only exists in Europe, apparently. Like, that ass, not a single human on Earth plays it in North America, so hey, my bad if I keep forgetting about it. But yeah, very high ceiling, very consistent, and it does things that nobody's really aware of, so it has to be here. Now, number 6 has to go to branded decks in general, but branded Chimera is probably the best version. It has a lot of one-card combos, it's also really consistent, and uh, if you're not getting debarriered, you're pretty much always winning. Like, one single branded fusion gets you so much because you get to summon Rinrum as well as get your Chimera engine started, and again, one card gets you several interruptions as well as a follow-up and the ability to summon Guardian Chimera on the opponent's turn, which is really filthy. But yeah, you're really going to have to draw that cross-out designator to stop the barrier post-game 1. Anyways, number 5 goes to the deck that I hated the most, and that's Flunderies. Unfortunately, and I said unfortunately, this deck is very good, and again, the reason why I hate it is because it feels like a scam deck. It sacks the shit out of you with cards like Dimension Shifter, Harpy's Feather Storm, and main deck evenly, Dark Ruler, Talons, Thrust, etc. Yo, the worst feeling is when they break and then next turn they top deck like Field Spell and Eaglin and they have the nuts. And obviously when they break they always have Shifter, so it's not like you can do too much anyways. What a coincidence, huh? What a coincidence. But yeah, that deck is the epitome of what this game should not be, but again, unfortunately, it does work very well. The Unchained matchup is so incredibly easy that you could suck at the game and still win against the best Unchained player out there. I'm not making this up, actually. Like, literally all the Unchained cards do nothing against the Flunderies engine. So yeah, it's a pretty decent deck, but if you do play it, uh, we're not friends anymore. My bad. Alright, number 4 will have to go to Rescue Ace. It's a deck that will keep improving over time. And I'm saying that because just like, uh, you know, Labyrinth and Mana Dome, it's also getting support in Age of Overlord, but indirectly. It's rather going to be with the Sinful Spoils engine that can summon the Rescue Ace Hydrant directly from the deck without taking up your normal summon and also nets you a draw in the process. And the combo is really good because you can either go into Terra Hertz to negate a spell or trap card with the Cybers the Zab Worm or into the Ibli combo. Ibli is nasty because you're also playing around Lightning Storm and evenly matched, even if you're giving an Ibli to a deck that doesn't lose to it. Like that, sometimes it's not even about locking your opponent from special summoning, but rather just giving a monster to your opponent. That's good enough. Like, I would still Ibli Flunderies players post game 1, even if I know they're playing Flunderies. We were never losing to Lightning Storm and evenly. Not when you're setting 4 back row with Turbulence. Broken mechanic, by the way. Yeah, clearly this deck has a lot going for it, but it's also very technical. Anyways, number 3 will probably have to be Unchained. Very consistent, very powerful, and also very resilient. Most combos just don't really lose too hard to hand shops. 
With that said, people are now slowly but surely getting a little more familiar with the deck and they now know how to counter it. Because previously, Unchained players were especially banking on the fact that people had no idea how to beat it. But yeah, this trick is slowly but surely fading away. And this is why a lot of pro players are dropping the deck altogether and moving on to something else. It's kind of like a one-trick pony or like a meta trend that worked for a few events but not for like the full format. Still a very good deck though and again can catch a lot of unprepared players off guard. You know you've won if your opponent is reading your Unchained cards. Anyways, number two, I'll have to say purely takes it. So the deck literally improved with Keshtira no longer being around because people are now dropping, you know, the Kaijus, Kurikaras, Book of Moon, and Book of Eclipse. It's really funny to say that the cards that beat the best deck, Keshtira, were also good against the second best deck, you know, purely. But the cards that beat Keshtira and purely kind of suck against Unchained, therefore people are dropping them, which is a good thing for purely. So ironically, Unchained becoming a good deck made Purely better. Because I want to say that the Unchained matchup for Purely is actually not too bad at all. The field spell just makes almost every single matchup so smooth when you're going second, honestly. As a matter of fact, you can actually just destroy your opponent's Rescue Ace players with the field spell if you're playing the deck. And this deck is basically at full power because for some reason Sleepy Memory is still a 3, which I cannot understand. Like, drawing 6 cards on the standby phase is not a fair mechanic. But yeah, the deck can play a lot of utility cards like Fenrir or Han shops or board breakers or whatever. So it's well equipped to be just about everything but it still retains the exact same flaws it always had. Yeah, there are still outs to Experly Noir but you have to play them. If you don't, you're probably screwed honestly. And the deck statistically cannot break because of how many starters the deck has. It's both good going first and second because going second you can OTK with Happy and going first you're summoning an unaffected by card effect kitty that also spins a bunch of cards. Anyways, the best deck of the current format just has to be tier elements. The deck is too good, and with its main enemy out of the way, Keshtira, nothing can stop it now. Okay, I lied, a shifter and dweller can stop Tira, but yeah, that's another story for another day. We don't talk about that. But yeah, the good news is that Tira Laments no longer has to play like 20 billion garbage cards in order to have a chance. That means you can increase the consistency of the deck by playing some better cards and just win more often. Yeah, I mean, no shit. Because you know, when I played the deck at Cancun, I kind of kept breaking. It wasn't fun. Like, at all. But yeah, this should no longer be a problem. I will have to say though, the Tier Laments deck that exists right now has nothing to do with the Tier Laments deck when it was Tier 0 back in the days. Everything is different and it's pretty refreshing. It's actually a super fun deck too and shockingly enough, a lot of people love it. But yeah, now you should have a better understanding and idea of what the field should be. So that's basically all I had for this video. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts about the best decks in the current format. And I will see you guys very soon. Peace.